We come to understand the presence of a poem by interpreting it, but we finally know it by realizing it is capable of all or nothing. The ride of a trial is the poet's attempts, resulting from the poet realizing he is capable of all or nothing. The casualty is a result in itself, for the poet does not know that he is sick for the sake of the ride. The poet assumes he is infinitely meaningful when the poem is no longer an attempt. How can the poet make any decision by an audience that can at any given moment deem him all and entirely meaningful or not? There is a different kind, or perhaps pleasurably lamer dance, in the catapult of the poem. It desires isolation, a sensation of private meaning. The exclamation suggests a conversation we cannot undertake, the parody of conversing, an embedded utterance we cannot strive. It is a traveling stagnancy which obviously trips the audience's power and understanding, undeniably unforeseen, dogmatically irresponsible, compromisingly weary, saturated, and unwieldy, metallically stutteresque, capsizing, intoxication, feisty, friendly, quaint, a career with a polyphony. Here, condensation is not favoring a small poem to a large one. The exclamation is the character. The character here is more flavorful in its private madness. Is this lame? Is this what seeps into the core of the poet's responsibility? The poem is carried through with a desire to isolate according to the physical definition. A paradox emerges with understanding that isolation is contradictory to the borders that keep it so independent. If a poem desires private meaning, is it then hateful to the very boundaries that keep it so mysterious, so distant? Is ambiguity mistaken for a mere blur of its use? What technicalities prevent clarity? When is confusion a mistake? There is a confusion as to just when a poet is or is not in control of his parody paradox. The schizophrenic may be the individual who possesses the unknown through an inevitable route of being clueless. If eventually the poet's contradictions become virtually invisible to or through him, then perhaps melodrama will persist in complete fury, begging its identity as it is muffled by the placidity of the poet's inscape. Here, the poet involuntarily sets fire to the brim. He is unmistakably under rapture, captivated. We become thoroughly aware of his image as we are asked not to negate him, but choose whether or not to engage. He is always available. Is this an exercise of justification? How do we come to understand poetic license? We inevitably attempt to make sense, to make sense of the encounter. There is a process of familiarizing oneself with an overlapping of potentially stagnant signs. The desire is movement. The desire is speed, an attempt to discourage the space as a realm for differences. And so I am attempting to make sense while still enjoying the ride. Lovers make sense of the ride. They manufacture a sensible sense from the exercise, a tolerable sensation of making sense. I have a fixation with a poem's disgrace. <laughs>